Okay, in the last video we added movement onto our two characters and they were starting to chase the apple. We're now going to go back to load world and we're going to reload the world and go to edit. And if we press play, you can see we've got some movement here. We can get the apples, maybe. I steer it very well. And Frank, the cycle, will be doing the same thing. But it looks like he's got stuck, in which case I'm going to do quite well here. But the game's not overly challenging. It's just a question of going around and getting the apple. So I'm going to press escape. I'm going to see if we can make it a little bit more challenging. Again, we can use the hand tool to move our position. We can zoom in and out. And I'm going to go to the object tool. And one of the nice things on Kodu is that we can not only program the characters, but we can also program the object. So if I click on the tree, right click and go to program, we can say if the tree sees, and you've got to choose what you want it to see. So in this case, I want it to see myself and I'm a flying fish, so I'm going to click on the flying fish. Then what can it do? We could say that it should shoot a blip, which is like a bullet, direction forwards. Now I've set it direction forwards because I want to be able to avoid this. I don't want to definitely uh, lose at this point. So we're going to press escape. We're going to press play. And as soon as we press play, we're going to try and fly and see if I can avoid being hit here. Now because I've set forwards, the direction that the tree fires in won't change. We can go back and change that, but it can make it a bit more difficult to succeed here. So again, if I press escape and I go back, choose the object tool, right click on it, go back to program. So instead of forwards, just cut that tile for a second, you'll see it will now probably move the blips towards me, which can make this quite tricky. I'm going to press play. And I'm not good enough to escape that. So it's your decision. In my case, I'm going to set direction back on. But if you think you can actually outrun the tree or you can put some obstacles to hide behind, then obviously it's possible to do this in a different way. We can also program the tower. So we can say program the tower that when it's bumped by, let's say, me, then it can shoot a missile. So now if I press play, the tree's firing aimlessly, and the tower won't do anything at all. But if I'm not very careful with my steering, and I just happen to bump into the tower, the tower will destroy me. So the game now involves not only getting the apples, but staying out of the firing line of the tree, and avoiding bumping into the tower. So you can see how this becomes a bit more challenging. And you can say the same for the other character. We could go back into this. We could go back onto the object tool, we can go back into programming, and we could also give it the same instructions for Frank. So we can say if it's bumped by well either by any bot, that would actually work. Or I'm trying to remember where the cycle is. There we go. Then it can do the same thing. We can say shoot missile. So it's the same. If Frank bumps into it, he gets shot. If I bump into it, I get shot. And you can see how this has started to make it's a slightly more interesting game. So again, we do the same thing. I'm going to go back. I'm going to save my world. I'm not going to change any details here. I'm just going to press save. Go back to the house again. And once again, I'm going to exit to the main menu. And I can make my own choice about whether I go and resume the game and continue the coding, or if that's me finished for today.